We're just going to worship a few more minutes this morning, family. We bless God for you. Good morning, travailing men and women. Let's just bask in his presence on this fat Tuesday. Such an honor and a privilege to be here yet once again on our prophetic prayer line. And for those that are joining us on our Facebook page this morning, we bless and honor each and every one this morning. Cast all your cares on him. It's not a concern that we have that God cannot meet for us. There is nothing too hard for our God. And we bless and honor him yet once again this morning. Good morning, Evangelist. Good morning, Sister Marquita. Good morning, Minister Julia Joy. God bless you. God bless you. Reverend Samuel, parachute baby, good morning, good morning. We bless and honor for you for being here this morning yet once again. Cast all your cares on him. Good morning, Sister Mary Ann. God bless you, God bless you. We're casting our cares upon God this morning. It is in God that we live. It is in God that we move. It is in God that we have our being. Thank you, Jesus. There are people that are searching for God in a real way. And uh, they're no longer playing church. They're no longer seeking God's hand. Uh, they're seeking his face. God, more so than what he can give us and what his outstretched hands provides for us. But we want the God of our salvation. Good morning, Sister Annie. God bless you. Sister Lisa, good morning. God bless you. We want the God of our salvation. So we just stretch ourselves wide this morning and allow him to minister to our spirit before we start our day. We just pass in his presence this just a few moment. moments. This is your opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. To do as he has instructed. Come Thank on, lay it at his feet. This is where we cast our day to God this morning. Before we even start our day, we give it all over to him. Whatever you decide for us to do today, God, it's okay with us. Whatever you want for us to do today, God, it's okay with us. And we don't have a problem with it. And our lives are not in a quandary. And we thank God for the decisiveness that God gives us, the clarity, the instructions that our Father gives us. Good morning, Minister Marquita. Mar Good morning, Sister Shakita. God bless you, Minister Shakita. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, we command our day-to-day, -day, every plot, every ploy, every wicked device, everything that Satan conjured against us this day, we call it to naught by the blood of Jesus. We thank you right now, Holy Spirit, that you rest, rule, and abide in our lives today. We thank you that the steps of a, a righteous man are ordered by you, God. So, God, we pray that you will continue to order our steps on this journey today. We, we understand your word declares that your arms are not short, that you cannot save. Neither is your ear heavy that you cannot hear. And then you declare that we are to call upon the name of the Lord and you will answer us and show us great and mighty things. Well, this day, God, we need a great and mighty thing. This Tuesday, December the 5th, the last month of this year, the last month of this year, we're asking for your anointing that destroys all yokes. We ask, Father, that you'll remove burdens and continue to set the captives free. Father, we thank you today that we will have lucrative careers. We thank you, Father, that everything that our hands touch, it will turn to pure gold. We thank you, Father, that there are no incidents, there are no accidents, there will be no fatalities, no hurt, no harm or danger. We thank you right now, Father, for everything that you're about to do. You said that we are to do great exploits, and so we align ourselves with the Spirit of God. We are align ourselves and our lives with your instructions. And so, Father, we thank you that we will adhere to righteousness. We will adhere to the instruction that you've given us as believers. And we have no problem in listening to you. Thank you, Father, for this day. It's victorious. It's triumphant. We thank you, Father, that our children are safe. We ask and plead and apply the blood of Jesus over our children. We plead and apply the blood of Jesus over every aspect in our life. And we thank you in advance for what you're about to do this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Truly, I will bless his holy name. We honor God yet once again this morning on this prophetic prayer line. We say good morning, God. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, travailing men and women. That's right. You've tuned in live to travailing men and women, changing a nation through prophetic prayer. And we thank God for this prayer line that God has given us to call in a nation back to him, calling a people back unto the Lord. And so 
we bless God for the privilege that we have to do as such. We thank God that this is our life support line. That's right. This is known as our life support line. This is the place each and every day where God filters down those nutrients that are necessary for us to continue in this Christian journey. Amen. God filters out each and every day. He said, I'm going to mend, M-E-N-D. I'm going to meet each need daily. Whatever it is that you have need of, God is going to truly meet you at your point of need. And we bless him for what he does. He said he made us what? Just a little lower than the angels, but he gave us charge. And so we appreciate the charge that our father has given us. And we take full opportunities to take the position that God has given us. We don't have a problem in doing whatever it is he called us to do. And we honor him with him being able to choose us to do as such. We're thanking him for choosing us to do as such. So this prophetic prayer line is that that's going to change your life. This prophetic prayer line is going to align you up with your destiny. It's going to cause you to be able to uh, now fulfill your purpose and doing so in a good way, doing so, being nurtured by the Lord, uh, not having uh, hesitations about your calling, not having uh, indecisiveness is about your calling, but pulling those qualities out of you that God has already placed on the inside. And so this is our objective. And we thank God for the objective that our father has given us. And we follow the instructions of the Lord and we don't have a problem in following the instructions that our father has given us. So we just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But this is the day that the Lord Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Now our particular prayer line we also have crusades, we have conferences, uh, we have summits, uh, prayer uh, meetings, prayer victuals, midnight cries, we fast, we pray, we seek God's face, and then we do 90-day journals. We do 21-day fast. Whatever it is the Lord that's deemed for us to do, why surely we're the ones to do it, and we honor God with everything that he gives us to do. That commitment that we have, that firm commitment in connecting to that vine and then staying there and not being tossed to and fro uh, like children we grow up in God. Amen. We are no longer on that milk, but we're on the meat of the word today, that substance that will keep you and hold you. Good morning, Sister Nicole. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor Parker. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Michelle. And so we're thanking God for the instructions and the assignment that he has given us, and we embrace this assignment. It is with kingdom pleasure that we serve our Father. It is with kingdom pleasure that we do what God has called us to do, and that is to change a nation back to God. And so this is what we're going to strive to do. And I believe that you're the one. I believe that your soul made such a cry, maybe willingly, unwillingly, maybe you came kicking and screaming. Maybe you got to a pivotal point in life that you said, God, I need some type of instructions. I need to hear something more so than my struggle. I need to hear something more so than my situation. I need to hear something more so that can give me some enlightenment and give me a, a, a willingness to do something different. If we never do anything different, you know what the saying is. If nothing changes, nothing changes. So it has to start with us. It starts with us making a well-made up mind. Amen. In that well-made up mind, we know and, and understand to let the devil know the position that he has. Your Bible said he is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so that lets us know, in other words, he's got a little boo game going. Amen. His little boo game won't work with us. He tries to make you feel that he has more power than what he has. But my Bible tells me that Jesus is the lion. Jesus is the only lion. He's the lion of Judah. And so that counterfeit always wants to try to come and disguise himself to be and take Jesus place. But we know that vicarious director came in, the substitute came in and he freed us from all hurt, harm, or danger. So we live life fully and freely and we don't have a problem in doing it. Your objective now is to understand the tools that God is giving you. Take those tools and use them. Utilize every aspect of the word of God that it can change the quality of your life. The quality of your life is going to change by the instructions that your father gives you. Then we have to be willing and obedient. And what does he say for those that are willing, obedient, travailing men and women? If we are willing and obedient, then we shall eat the good of the land. And I just believe God. I believe this season and time now is whereby the saints of God are going to demonstrate who their real God is. We're going to be in a position and place where this entire world is going to see God on you. You're going to be in positions now where people around you that are falling by the wayside and maybe peradventure your jobs are downsizing and maybe peradventure any type of mishaps that can happen. The tragedies where we see the snipers are going on. If you're in a position in God, hear me now and hear me clearly. Once you position yourself with God, 
God is, he, according to his word, he said, I will cause that, uh, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That's what his word said. He said, I will rebuke that thing that tries to take you out. I will step in and I will be your fortress. I will be that very present help in the time of trouble. And so when we season ourselves to hear from God that way, temper our spirits to obey him, there is no good thing that God will withhold from those that walk upright. Now, I'm just a believer. I'm just a plain old believer. And what the Bible says is what I believe. When I read the Bible, I don't add to it or take it away because his word says in me, my word is yea and amen. So why do we put something in the middle of those two words when they're already def a definitive? He gave us a definite yes and he gave us a, a definite amen. So sometimes we try to put something in the middle of those when they've already been answered. He already gave you the affirmation. He already gave you the confirmation. So let's live in the confirmation of God. Let's live in what he has already spoken to our spirit and we walk therein. You're going to walk in a season now where you're not going to be worried. Then you're going to wonder why I'm not worrying. Who have I been sent for? You're walking in a season now where there can be no hardships that's going to take your attention. You're not going to pay attention to hardships. You're not going to be overwhelmed with bills. You're not going to be overwhelmed with all of those responsibilities that you had in past time because there's a rest that is coming in God. There is that peace that surpasses all understanding. When Jesus left this earth, what did he say? He said, my peace I leave unto you. He left us peace. He didn't leave us hardship. He didn't leave us dilemmas. He didn't leave us struggles. He didn't leave us confusion, frustrations, disappointment, failure. He did not leave that. He said, what I leave unto you, watch this. He said, my peace I leave unto you. Then he backed it up and he said, now I'm going to send you a comforter as well. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost so that the Holy Ghost can do what? So that he can lead us so that he can guide us, so that he can instruct us, and he can show us the way. I find now, and I've been saying it for the longest, the church needs the Holy Ghost. Amen. The new church needs the Holy Ghost. The new church needs the Holy Ghost. So when we find ourselves in a position uh, where we are powerless, when we find ourselves in positions that we just can't really come up with the answers, and there's no equations, there's nothing that we can do <clears throat> to find a, a solution to our problem, Introduce your problem to your God. Introduce your problems to your God. And the solution is in God. It is in God that we live. Watch this. It is in God that we move. It is in God that we what? That we have our being. So when we receive that anointing to hear by the spirit, when we receive the anointing to let God minister to our situation, allow God to show up in those problems, allow God to take adversities, take frustrations, take pains, take sorrows. Let God be God. Let God arise and let your your enemies be scattered. So this is the season in 2018 where you're really, really going to be triumphant if you keep your feet in the place that God puts you in. Don't veer to the left and don't veer to the right. This is the time where we truly stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It's time for God to build himself a mighty, mighty army. And God does not call a major prophet for a, any old reason. Amen. If he called me to this Facebook page, if he called me to now to change the the, the normal that we had on a prayer line, you better know that God is up to something. You better know that there's going to be a shift in the spirit whereby God is going to take you out of that obscurity. He's going to take you out of fault finding. He's going to take you out of being busybody. He's going to take you that you're going to have a solemn, a solemn, a life as unto God, a sacred life as unto God, and it will not be a hardship. Your Bible says that the commandments of God are not grievous. They are not grievous. So when we have a full understanding of what God has given us to do, the commitment that we have as a believer, the commitment as a child of God, amen, then this thing is not such a tedious task. It's not something that we feel we can't obtain or we cannot do. The enemy would make you feel that salvation is just too hard. It would make you feel that I'm here, but I don't see any change in my life. I'm here. I'm going to church. I'm fasting. I'm praying. Who have I been sent for? Fasting and praying and paying my tithes and giving my offering and nothing seems to change. I'm making all the sacrifices, but where are the sacrifices that are being made for me? Well, guess what? Jesus made the sacrifice. Amen. He made the ultimate sacrifice when he paid the price for us to live. When Jesus died on Calvary's cross, he died for humanity. And your Bible says that everything that opposed us, everything that would come against us, Jesus nailed those things on the cross. So what we do, what we do, we go back to Calvary. Uh, can I just revelate here? Uh, you know, we go all the 
the way back to Calvary and here we go plucking stuff off the cross that he already nailed there. Can you imagine how hard your hands are? Can you imagine how beat up your hands are trying to take those things and pull them away off of that cross and say, I just got to wear it. I just got to be in pain. I've just got to struggle. So you go back and pull struggle up off the cross. You go back, pull frustrations off the cross. He said, all of those things should not be named among you because I've dealt with them in a way in which as a believer, when you allow me to minister to your mind, when you allow Jesus to minister to your spirit, your spirit man doesn't have an ability to do what the flesh does. The spirit man will not worry. The spirit man will not fall weary in well-doing. The spirit man will not be in a place where he cannot be replenished and restored by the power of God. It is the heart that God deals with and the heart is God himself coming in there. God comes into those old stony hearts and he causes those heart to be flesh. And then he said, then I put you as an emblem in my hand, in the hand of God, Ebo shot in God's hand. We are now an emblem of who, as who he is. So he has hand picked us for such a time as this. You have been seasoned in God. You've been tempered in God, but we've got to go back to the old landmark. I want to help the young folk this morning. And I want all the intercessors that know that I'm talking right this morning. Y'all began to shout. You're talking right. Woman of God, you're talking right. I want the seed and saints of God to help me help these young folk that cannot hold on to God's unchanging hand. They cannot be in a position, hallelujah, that they don't continue to slip and fall. They don't continue to go back to the old ways of life, not going back to the nightclubs and not going back to letting Tyrone pay your bills. Uh, I don't have a talk back prayer line this morning, not reverting back to the old you when the Bible declares that old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Once you become new in God, you're your intellect, amen somebody, your intellect, your rationale, your understanding of an equation, the Holy Spirit now ministers to you. He begins to teach you and he began to lead you and he began to guide you. He'll say, don't you go that way. He'll tell you, don't you go to the right and don't you go to the left. There was a thing called holiness. Holiness is not your long skirts. Holiness is not your long dresses. Holiness is not your red fingernail polish. I shared with the church on Sunday when I got saved, the mothers of Zion at the living the street church of God. They said, oh, we're so glad you're saved, daughter. We are so glad that God brought you in. And so now we know you're going to take off that red fingernail polish, right? And I'm saying, red fingernail polish, what that got to do with? Oh, well, so, you know, I, I'm the one that I, I, I don't talk back. I will, I've always been the, the not talk back child. I've been very obedient. Amen. And, and do whatever someone says to do. And I respect my adults. And so I took the fingernail polish off, but I didn't understand it. Uh, your topic today is don't walk away from holiness. Don't walk away from holiness. God gave us a firm foundation and the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal. This is what your Bible says, 2 Timothy 2, 19. For the foundation of God standeth sure having them seal. Uh, them that are, are righteous and them that say they name the name of God. We've got to depart from iniquities. Away from holiness are so much traps set up for you. Away from holiness. Holiness is God's standards. Holiness is sacredness. Holiness is sanctification. It, it's not your religion. Amen, somebody. It's not a religious status. It's not a religious quote, but it's a commandment from God that be ye holy for I am holy. I find that we entertain propositions from people that sometimes seem uh, so appealing. Somebody can offer you something and you didn't never think about it. And you said, well, I think I'll try that. The same as I told you all on my testimony on yesterday, when my girlfriend, best friend, and Lord, I don't know if you could be a best friend to try to send somebody to hell with you. But anyway, amen. I offered me something that was appealing to lose weight 30 years ago. I, I, sometimes things that people offer you, they're very tempting. And, and yet others just don't make any sense. The stuff that they want to offer you. Uh, you act like I'm boo-boo the fool to try to tell me certain things. Amen, somebody. To try to persuade me and convince me to do a thing when I know the thing is not going to work for me. When I already know the consequences of my actions. When God orchestrated his church, stay with me, I'm going somewhere this morning. When the Father orchestrated his church, the ecclesia or the ecclesia, the called out ones, uh, he put a pen to plan. He inspired the word of God. He inspired men to write the word of God. 
God and under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they began to have the penmanship of a ready writer. And so he gave us instructions at that time as to how we're to live. When we came to God, amen, somebody, obviously we was told from the flow up. When we came to God, we had situations and struggles in our lives that we say, I just can't take this any longer. I've got to find a better way of doing things. I must have another resolve in order to live this life fulfilling. And so he inspired men to write things he obviously knew that we didn't. God already knew some stuff in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse number 11. Y'all know it. Amen. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. The thoughts that I have for you of a good end, a peaceful end. But you got to follow that because God's thoughts are not our thoughts and God's ways are not our ways. So we have to change our motions. Amen. We've got to change the direction in life in which we are going in order for them to motion by God, in order for them to be instructed by God, in order for us to be able to adhere to the word of God. God knows that if, he, if these plans are executed properly, it will work. If we execute his plans properly, church, they will work. Uh, his eyes are on the clock, so you won't run out of time. I don't have a talk back prayer line this morning. Uh, his eyes are on the clock, so you won't run out of time. His hands are on the thermostat, so the heat will never get the best of you. He turns it up. What did he say? He said, the king's heart is in my hand and I turn it in the direction in which I so desire. Amen. I need the old saints of God to back me up this morning because we're going to pull these young folk out of obscurity. We're going to pull them back to the place of holiness so that holiness will not be a scary word. Sometimes people fear the word of holiness. They feel as if Ebo shot. They feel as if they have to be the tongue talkers rolling over the flow or holy rollers all over the flow acting unseemly, but the Holy Ghost is not unseemly. My Bible tells me that he is a just God. The Bible lets me understand he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he is not the author of confusion. It's holiness. Don't walk away from holiness. God planted within Moses certain instructions when he was building the tabernacle. And he gave him certain things in wisdom. Hallelujah. He said, when you bring the people together at a certain time, I will put the spirit that's on you, Moses. I'm going to put it on the people. But what is happening now is the new modern day Moses is they don't have the spirit of God. So if you don't have the spirit, then how are you going to implement the spirit in anybody else? It's not a fault finding message and don't hear me with your flesh. There seem to be some people that probably really love God. They probably really have the best intentions for the people of God. But if they haven't gone the old fashioned way themselves, if they haven't gone to that old landmark where they really weep between the porch and the altar and get the filthiness and the world and they're in without of themselves, then they can only give you what they have for themselves. So I feel it's time to go back to the old landmark. Holiness without which no man shall see God. Don't you walk away from holiness because God has a plan. He has a plan. It's the spirit of God, amen, that within you that will cause you not to fail. But if his spirit isn't in there, then guess what happens? Then we wrestle with our flesh. We wrestle with our flesh. If we don't allow God's spirit to implement everything in our lives, holiness, righteousness, uh, cause the consciousness, the seed of our consciousness to be seared by the Holy Ghost. And so we revert back to the old things that we used to do. We revert, our minds will travel all across town. You get in a hardship. You know how to resolve a hardship. You know what you used to do. And so the enemy would cause us to try to do what? Think of those things that we used to do. Find a resolve for our own self. But this is not what God wants for us. This is not the betterment of life if a better of mankind that our father has orchestrated for us as believers. The enemy would have one to disengage and disconnect and step away from holiness. Uh, but you have to understand uh, that the problems that we have, we have to introduce them to our God. Amen. Too many car loans, too many mortgage payments, the mortgage holders, the title loan companies, the Amscot, the utility companies, the debt collectors, your creditors, uh, they're the ones that are being used by the enemy to make you step away from holiness. Because sometimes when we can't see a resolve to a matter, sometimes when we can't see the monies uh, in our bank account to make sure that we can pay all these obligations, then we begin to do what? We scheme, we scam, we do everything but pray. Y'all ain't going to talk to me this morning. We'll 
do everything. We'll borrow from everyone else. We'll go to Amscot and get those outstanding loans. Shall I revelate this morning? Go to the title loan company and bargain everything that you own already. You get a, a $5,000 loan, but you got to pay $10,500 back. Who've been sent for? So if you needed the $5,000, then how are you going to pay the $10,000 back? And so you go right down in that revolving thing where you continue to be down. You continue to be downtrodden, knocked down, beat up, and then you don't find a resolve in it. So now you got to go and borrow more monies to pay off the loans. I've been sent for you this morning and don't you hang the telephone up. See, you, you, your problems are being used by the devil and your problems, amen, Todd, and they know their assignment. The problems know that they've been sent to frustrate your purpose. The bills know what their uh, obligations are. They know what their instructions are from Satan and they do their job well. If you don't understand and recognize that they are subject to God's authority and God's power, your bills are subject to God's authority. Your Bible declares that you can decree a thing and it shall be established. So you can decree that God, you're going to teach me, amen, how to be responsible with the finances that you give me. The first of all, it starts with your tithing and your offering. Will a man rob God? When we rob God, then God can't co-sign your life. He can't back you up on things that you do. And so we stay in that proverbial dilemma that we can never find a way out. But God said, I've already provided a way of escape. Amen. Then he said, there is nothing such as common unto man that is happening to you. He gave kabosh he Boshaya. He gave the rest of the saints of God that would listen to him and walk in holiness. He gave them a formula that they could come out of that old rut. He gave them a formula that they don't have to be stuck. They don't have to be downtrodden. They don't have to allow those bills to take over their lives. Holiness, holiness. What is holiness? Well, I'm glad you asked. In Greek, holy, holiness means Hagar Asmos. Hagar Asmos. Uh, it means consecrating. It means sanctification. Holiness means the state of being holy. Holiness is a life of holiness, a, a, a total devotion to God. It's a total devotion to God. So can we get the stigma off of this word? It, it's not your clothing. Come on. It's a lifestyle, the lifestyle that is consecrated at to God, that is devoted to God, that listens to the Father, and then we do what the Father wants us to do. Holiness, that total devotion to God. Holiness is the highest reverence of belonging to God, to be cleansed of faults and set apart by God. So this is why the Bible declares that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. This is why the Bible says, be ye holy and come from amongst them. How can two walk together lest they agree? Now watch this. We're going to blow your mind on this one. God gave me the revelation on this one, y'all. He gave me the revelation on this one. So he says, watch him. If you're in agreement with pain, that's why it's still there. If you're in agreement with failure, that's why it's still there. Because how can it remain unless you agree with it? How can it stay there? The Bible says, how can two walk together lest they agree? So if I don't walk, come on up in here. If I don't walk in hardship and agree with it, then it can't stay. If I'm not combat compatible with this thing, then it cannot stay. How can two walk together lest they agree? It, it means I'm in agreement with hardship. I'm in agreement with failure. I'm in agreement with frustration. I'm in agreement with poverty. But if you come out of the alignment with that thing, it cannot remain. If you let that thing know that I'm not in agreement with you, there's not a common factor in our lives for you to stay here. Amen. And so that thing has to be dismissed. It only has power because you agree with it. You can declare and decree a thing and it shall be established. You can let your body know that this body is a temple of the living God and my body does not house sickness. This body this body is a body that belongs to God and God lets us understand that he will take good care of us. Those things that concern us, he said, I'll take care of those things. He will perfect the things that concern us. This is what my word says. You know what, prayer line family? You know what, Facebook family? I find today that many Christians, as soon as they've got a full understanding the real revelation, what God wants us to do, have that understanding about their responsibilities to the Lord when he'll teach you and lead you and guide you. And he said, now, this is what I want you to do. Walk in the statutes. We're under grace, so we're not under the law. The law kill it. 
the letter of the law killeth. So we're not that uh, God is not such a scrutinizing God that he keeps us to the letter of a thing. He gives us grace, but grace doesn't give us a, a right to sin. Grace doesn't give us a right to veer away from the holiness without which no man shall see God. Grace doesn't give us the right not to have the covenant relationship that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the same God. So the covenant that he made with our forefathers, he made that covenant with us. Remember that we were not a people. Remember the Gentiles were not the ones that God really wanted. He really didn't want us. He had a Jew. The Jews were his people, but because the Jews would not accept his son, so God said, now I've got to go find myself a people. He found you. Amen, somebody. He found you in your dilemmas. He found you in your hardships. He found you frustrated in life. And so he gave us instructions to adhere to in order for us to have everlasting life. But in order for, before we even get to the fact of everlasting life, that we can have a lucrative lifestyle here on the earth. The lifestyle that represents the God that we serve. So I find that people, we get right to the point, y'all, get right to the brink of success, get right to the place where God's about to just blow your mind with blessings, and then what happens? Here comes the other voice. Here comes that other voice. And we taught on the voice on our prayer line, and we pray that one of these days we'll let you all hear it, and we may teach it again. This voice that is going on now that talks to people, the reason that they do all these heinous crimes, this voice that talks to people now that kills themselves, this voice that they listen to that voice, and then the voice alters their steps, and then they entertain this voice by allowing him access to their thoughts. So now all of a sudden, God isn't God enough for you. God isn't God enough. I didn't say good enough. He's not God enough. Now, all of a sudden, what God wants for you to do, it, it's not appeasing to you anymore. It doesn't appeal to you now. I've got to figure this thing out for myself because, after all, I did what my pastor asked me to do. I, I've done what uh, Dr. Harris asked me to do, and life isn't working for me that way. Well, stay in holiness, daughter. Man of God, stay in holiness. Don't veer away from God because God has a plan. If we will stay and adhere to his plans, this life that we have, it'll revolve around in righteousness and holiness. In the gates of righteousness is a protection. In the gates of righteousness is a place where the enemy cannot come in. Your Bible says when he sees that blood-stained banner, the very death angel must pass you by. But you've got to position yourself where the presence and the power of God is. Your Bible declares in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, and verse number 14, he says, watch this, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It's a stipulation. It is what it is. It's a stipulation and it is what it is. He said, if you don't implement this in my life, you're not going to see me. If you don't implement this in your life, you're not going to see God. There's a way that seems right unto man. Of what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What we must understand and recognize is we've got to remain and don't walk away from the principles and the guidelines that our father has given us. God has given us specific instructions. He's not a taskmaster. He told Jehoshaphat, he said, choose ye this day. He said, I present to you life. And you can choose it or you can walk away from it. Choose ye this day blessings or curses. He said, under the blessings, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he added no sorrow. But under the curses, we've got diseases, we've got sicknesses, we've got infirmities. Shall I revelate? And so when we examine ourselves, then we begin to see how our lives are actually structured and orchestrated. What life am I really living? Am I living in the heritage of the Most High God? Am I living to the place where I know the kinsman redeemer has washed me in the blood, cleansed me in the blood, paid a price for me, redeem me from the curse of the law of sin. Amen. Or do I live such a lifestyle that it seems as if I'm still under the curse? Some believers' lifestyle depicts that they're still living under a curse. But Jesus died in order for you to live. Watch this. I, I, I've got to teach this word on this prophetic prayer line. And I've got to teach this word to the Facebook nation. The Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place. You got to stay there. You got to stay in holiness. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall do what? Shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Uh, he that remains. He that stays in the process. The process is what? The process 
process is the plan of God. The process is the plan of God. I call it the developmental process of life. It's a developmental process of life where God himself does what? He seasons us. He tempers us. He lets us understand and recognize that he's the very present help in the time of trouble. God is that very present help in the time of trouble. And so we recognize that we can lean on him. We recognize that the God that we serve, we can truly depend on him. Have our prayer line this morning. You can depend on God when everybody else turns their back on you. You can depend on God when you get laid off on that job. You can depend on God when that man walks away out of that marriage. You can depend on God when your wife walks away and say, I just don't want to be married any longer. You can depend on God when the utility company say, you got three days to pay this bill. Then all of a sudden, glory to God, some money's come out of nowhere. Because why? You got seed in the ground. And so God begins to release a harvest from that which you planted. You got to trust in God because he's got a plan. He has a plan. In these holy days, sometimes it's very frustrating with people. Sometimes you've lost loved ones. You've got people that are out of your life. You don't know how you're going to get toys for the children. I've been sent for you. And so we began to do what? We revert back to our old tactics. We revert back to that old stinking thinking and the thought process that we had in the world. It didn't work because if it worked, we would have still been in the world. If what we used during those seasons and times away from God, had it worked, had it been effective, we would have never wanted God. So God allowed frustrations. He allowed trouble. He allowed brokenness to take us to the place that we know we need a God of the salvation. Amen. We need a God of our salvation. We need God to rescue us. We need God to pull us out of obscurity. We need God to pull us out of the pits. We need for God to take us out of darkness and keep us out of darkness for the rest of our lives. So watch him. He said, you've got to dwell, stay there, remain. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow. Uh oh, watch this. Under the shadow of the almighty. He that remains, he that stays in the process, he that stays in the plans that God has for you. Uh, this word shadow, this word shadow uh, in Greek is episkiazo. Episkiazo. And episkiazo, it means to throw over to throw over, shadow, to throw over. So that means there's some type of a protection that he has. Am I right about it? There's some type of a protection that God has for you. It means to overshadow. It means protection. It means a shadow screens one from the sun. Oh, glory to God. It, it, it hides one from its foes, uh, the shadow. It hides, oh, y'all better hear the Holy Ghost on this prayer line this morning. It hides one from the foes. So God has you in a contained place. He got you in that secret tower. He's got you in that strong pavilion where the righteous run in and they are safe under his shadows. The devil can't find you. You better open your mouth and say, reposition me, Lord. God, I need for you to reposition me now. I need for you to take me under the shadows of the almighty so that my foes cannot find me. Amen, somebody. Watch this. It means so that the glorious attributes of the most high God, the underclouded rays of his perfectionists are a shadow of defense to his people. This is a defense mechanism that God uses that he places you in this place. Hallelujah. And he's constantly right there watching over you. And he's watching you to make sure that that devil doesn't come and destroy you. Make sure that he doesn't come in your homes. Make sure that he doesn't destroy your children. But you've got to position yourself there. And once you get there, then you stay there. How do I stay there? You stay there by holiness. Holiness without which no man shall see God. You will have no place in him. Your flesh will have no glory in God. So you got to move in the spirit and you got to you got to stay connected with the spirit of God. You got to let God arise and let those enemies be scattered. You got to know that without God, you won't be able to do anything. You're going to only do so much in life. And then you find yourself right back in failure, right back in that vicious cycle up today, down tomorrow. But didn't we tell you all the other day that God said that my children are about to defy gravity that this time when he elevates everybody, when he begins to give you promotions now, when he begins to open up that bank account, when you, I hear the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost said we got to start opening three different bank accounts. It's time for you to open three different bank accounts because overflow is yours now. Overflow is coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. God's going to give you so much so that you're not going to have uh, be able to retain what God's about to give you now. Stay with me. Stay with me. The Bible says, it's an excellent thing. He says, how excellent is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men 
put their trust under the shadow of their wings. The children of men, amen, somebody, put their trust under the shadow of God's wings. My trust is under the shadow of God's wings. Wow, shall I revelate? My trust is under the shadows of God's wings. Amen. There is no good thing that he will withhold from you. Your trust is there. Everything about you is there. Your life revolves around him. Every aspect of life is in him. This is why we can always acclaim for God I live and for God I die. There are rewards for a lifestyle of holiness. There are rewards for the sacrifices that you make. But the Bible says that the obedience is better than the sacrifice. The Bible says that we are to obey God rather than man. So no matter what man says, no matter what everybody else does, don't you jump on the bandwagon. Every type of fad that goes around, uh, and I'm always... Uh, uh, mindful about the, the new church. The Lord showed me that it's not a new church. It's a new age movement rather than a new church. And people are really are not even aware this new age movement that has crept up into the house of God, but it's just supposed to be a new era of God, not a new age, but a new era of God. The church has uh, veered away from holiness so much so that there are no altar calls in most, most of your churches. You ever wonder why that they don't call you to the altar anymore? Ever wonder why when the pastor completes the message, uh, that is pretty much done. You ever known that sometimes they take up offering longer than they preach? You ever seen that thing in your churches? You ever seen when you walk in the building, now all of a sudden they've got the lights dimmed and everything is don't doomy and gloomy and setting up some type of an atmosphere that doesn't seem to be godly? Isn't it eerie to you sometimes when you go in there like that? You, you know what has happened? The word of God says that you've turned my house into a house of thieves and robbers. You've turned my den, amen, somebody, into thieves and robbers. A den is what? Look the word up. A den is a lounge. And so now the church has now become on the form of the lounge effect. Looks like your nightclubs. They got the blue lights, the red lights, the purple lights all on the stage. It's not even a pulpit any longer. They call it the stage. Then they call the musicians the band. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. When you hear revelation, you see how the enemy comes in. And it's not because the pastors are trying to do actually anything wrong. They're not doing it intentionally. But a lot of times they see what other people do. And so they want to grow a large lucrative ministry. So they jump on the bandwagon. Whatever the fad is, everybody go for it. They just go for it. Praise team got on uh, straight, uh, 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 spandex pants. Amen, somebody. Camel toes, y'all ain't going to pray with me. Uh, so much things that are going on now. And they're, they're really innocent people and they don't really mean any harm, but this is how the enemy does it. He comes right in. He creeps right in, right in those places, right there. He puts us in darkness. They turn the lights off. So now you're in darkness, but that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm the light of the earth. So why we got to turn the lights down low and come closer? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You got that ambiance now of the den effect and the den is a lounge. And so now the enemy has crept in and taken holiness out and entertainment spirit. Come on up in here. Uh, we've got to be entertained and it coming in so many different facets in the house of God. And, and God said, there's an old landmark that stands sure. He said, my foundation stands sure. And my foundation stands sure. God doesn't vacillate between his foundation. Of course, you've got to appease the young people. You know, they say, yeah, right. Of course, you've got to do something in order to encourage them to come in. And that's not a problem. It is not a problem because once you come there, then the job of the pastor at that time is to do what? Implement holiness. It's time to read that Bible, get in the word of God, find yourself in the word of God. Then the Holy Ghost is going to do his job. Oh, he's going to do his job. I'll grow you up if you let me. The Holy Ghost is going to do his job. What we have to do is we as pastors, we've got to live a lifestyle that is conducive for the Holy Spirit to occupy within us. And once he occupies within us, then he begins to speak to us. He ministers to us so that we can minister to others. Then we begin to minister to others. We introduce him to, we introduce them to him. Amen. The, the paraclete, the one that walks beside you, the one that leads you and guides you, the one that will tell you, no, 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 we're not doing that any longer. That's not us. You're a new creature in Christ. We don't function that way. We don't flow like that. We don't roll like that. Amen. Somebody staying in God. Revolving your life around him. God is a storehouse of various consolations. He's a treasury of untold wealth. He's an arsenal where faith may find abundant weapons to attack the enemy. Have our church this morning. 
God will pull you in a place that he will show you every weapon that you need to combat the wiles of the enemy. He'll give you the gaps, the nines, whatever's necessary to defeat that enemy. But you've got to go to that place with him and stay in that secret place. In that secret place, he shows you. In that secret place, he talks with you. In that secret place, he'll minister to you. He'll tell you, I don't need you to do that today. I don't need you to go down I-95 today. Don't go down 285. Don't go down 20 today. I've been sent for you. Don't take I-4 today. If we listen to him, follow his instructions where he leads me, amen, I will go. There are rewards for a lifestyle of holiness. The omniscience of God, the omnipotence of him is a hiding place. The faithfulness is our buckler. The angels guard the unseen things in our lives, and they attend to our every need if we walk in holiness. Now, he's not responsible for us if we veer away. He's not responsible if we go to the devil's den. The territorial rights and territorial boundaries that they have. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, the Bible says that the devil is uh, all day, night and day talking to God about you. All day and all night talking to God about you. So if he's positioned himself in that way, how can he be at your house? He's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere all at the same time. See, we give Satan too much credit. He doesn't have that much power. He doesn't have authority. He's over there talking to God. The Bible says he's accuser of the brethren. He's accusing you night and day to God. See, God, did you hear those negative words they said? They said, I've got cancer. So guess what? Now he has legal right for that to stay in your body because you took ownership of it. You claimed it. Amen, somebody. You claimed that. They say Satan heard that. So he said, now here we go. They're in my territory now. They're in my domain now. So I'm going to orchestrate something that will keep that thing in their body. Amen. But you have to know it's your words. The Bible says uh, that out of the heart flows the issues of life. So now when you know you have life, you don't have cancer. Come on. There may be a sign there. There may be a symptom there. But allow the bomb of Gilead, amen, somebody, to go to the root cause of that matter and curse that demonic force. Curse the demonic force that wants to place a curse on your body. He gave us the power. He said I gave you dominion and I gave you power. Upon this rock I build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of God. When are we going to be the real church of God? When are we going to walk under the dunamis power of God himself? The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the power that the saints of God ought to walk in. We should be able to change the atmosphere when we walk in a building. Everything is subject to the power of God and the presence of God. So you need to let, let, understand and recognize this morning it's the Holy Spirit that will orchestrate your lives, fill you with his glory, amen, and then give you the power. Church don't have the power. And it's not a fault of yours. I'm not fault finding. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. Church don't have any power. We're permitted into God's presence or God's chambers. And then we are allowed to commune with him. You ever been there lately? Have you actually been there lately? When is the last time that you just sat down and talked to God? When is the last time God talked to you? Do you know his voice? How do you know it's God speaking? There are other voices out there. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and he can't expect to receive anything from the Lord. So how do we know we're listening to God? Or is it that other voice? That voice that called that man to shoot up all those people in Las Vegas. That voice that causes those to do heinous crimes, crimes of passion. How do we know that's not the voice speaking to us? How am I going to know that it's vo God's voice? Well, if you know for a fact that you're a sheep, then the Bible said, my sheep shall know my voice and not another voice will they follow. So do you have a committed relationship, a covenant with God? When you're married, you know your husband's voice. When you're married, you know your wife's voice. And so what? We're married to God. We're in covenant with him. We're the bride that the groom is getting ready to come back and get. Don't be like the five uh, other five versions that weren't wise. Be wise and know the voice of your savior. Be wise and know the voice of your companion. Be wise and know the voice that you have covenant relationship with. Or do we have covenant relationship with him? Are we intimate with God? Are we actually going in with him? Going in that place where he can speak to us, that he can minister to us, that he can show us some great and mighty things? The secret place of the Most High God. Come on. It's where his protection network is. A, a host of armies, a body of believers, like and as unto the Lord. So when you're weak, you run on in that place because there's going to be somebody there that's going to lift you up. You're going to have a brother and a like kind of faith that'll talk to you and minister to you and tell you, you can make it. You can do this. Don't you give up on God. You can do this. Don't you give up on God. Holiness. It's not a religion. It's not a church denomination. 
It's a representation of the covenant of righteousness between God and mankind. Did you hear me? Did you hear that? Holiness. It's a representation of the covenant of righteousness between God and mankind. This is why God always admonishes us to stay in that secret place. This is why he lets us know there's a gate called righteousness, uh, that narrow road, the path, amen, that narrow path that we need to take because that broad road is that road to destruction where everybody else is going, what everybody else is doing, uh, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Uh, it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Come on. So we get all of these luxuries and we get everything that we need if it's not within the confounds of what God has given us, the instructions that he's given us to adhere to, then you lose your soul. You lose your soul. Holiness. It's not that religion. It's not that church denomination. It's a representation of the covenant of righteousness between God and mankind. True religion is personal. True religion is personal. God ministers to you in a way in which you can understand him. He ministers to you. Come on. He said, I come in the volume of the book. And, and so we have to know how God instructs us. The Bible said it was a mystery in times past, but now he reveals it to his servants, the apostles and the prophets, those things that men erred for in long days and long time ago. God gives revelation knowledge about those things now. He gives revelation knowledge. And this is why us that are in the prophetic realm, if you have an ear to hear by the spirit, we know 2018 is getting ready to blow the saints of God's mind. I'm telling you, I'm so excited about this thing, about to push December on out of here. Move on out of the way. Get on out of the way. A time and a season which God's going to take care of the saints of God. But the posture that we have and the place that we position ourselves in, in order to hear our father, in order to live the instructions that he gives us and not do it grudgingly. Even when you give, what did he say? He said, I love a cheerful giver. I don't want anybody that's going to be grudging about what they're going to do. You keep that. You keep that. He doesn't even want it. True religion is personal, uh, but it's not enough to just acknowledge him as Lord and Savior and Lord of the universe, but we have to learn how to bow down to him as our Lord. God, you're Lord over me. God, any way you bless me, God, I'll be satisfied. Whatever you ask of me to do, God, is not a hard thing. I don't have a problem in doing whatever God has called me to do. This is why I was able to uh, abstain from the drugs when God delivered me for these last 30 years. Had I not lived a holy lifestyle, don't you know that enemy would have came back in? You know he knew whatever worked back and then he tried all over again. Come on up and here prayer line family he knew what my weakness was he knew what the oppressions or depressions abandonment rejection he knew those spirits that had been introduced to me as a young girl that that was the gateway that he used to come into my life and you think he wouldn't try to do that again you think if i hadn't god glory to god if i hadn't had a well made up mind that for god i live and for god i die that i'm not going to let any inroads any admixtures in my life devil you're not coming in here no way no how amen somebody in a well made up mind it means that what the seed of my consciousness has been seared by the Holy Ghost. And so I follow his instructions. I listen to his guidelines. I read my word. I fast and I pray and I separate myself from the world. And I don't walk in agreement with anything that opposes the will and the knowledge of God. You can't walk in agreement with those things. Anything that causes you to want to compromise the values of who God is, you let him know, see, you wouldn't want to be here. It doesn't work here like this. It doesn't work here like that. Amen. Put your trust in God. He put his trust in you. Remember I told you, prayer line family, Jesus had so much confidence in us that he went to heaven and he said, I'm preparing a place for you. For where I am, there you shall be also. He knew you were going to make it. He didn't choose any losers. He knew you were going to make it. But the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to those that can what? That can endure until the end, that can remain in holiness, can remain in and live in consecrated lives, sanctified lives, separated from the influence of this world and allowing God to minister to your spirit. The Lord wants to minister to you today, Sister Sharon. The Lord wants to minister to you, daughter. I see the Lord doing some things in your life, precious, that you've had on a back burner and you've been having some, uh, some ideas. You've been having some ideas, the Lord said, and the Lord says now he's going to release those ideas and cause them to come to fruition. He said, I've not forgotten about you. There's some things that you've asked God to do for you. And I hear the Lord saying in 2018, there are three doors that God's going to open for you. There are three doors that God is going to open for you, woman of God. Father, I thank you that Sister Sharon is getting ready now to embark upon the best thing that you've ever
ever had for her. I thank you, Father, that she withstood the test of time. I hear the Lord saying that you were tested. Amen. But God said he pruned you and he pulled away some things out of your life. He pushed some people out of the way because where you're about to go, others cannot go with you. There are some that you can't not take, you, take with you in this new place that God is taking you at because they're leeches. Amen, somebody. They're buzzards and they want to pick and gnaw and pick and gnaw. But I hear the Lord saying that you've proven yourself to be faithful. And so now he said, I'm getting ready to disperse upon you liberally those things that you thought you were going to do 15 years ago, says the spirit of the living God. Have our prayer line this morning. Have our Facebook family this morning. God bless you. Listen, don't be satisfied with your theologians. Don't just be satisfied with what I'm saying here this morning on Facebook. Uh, what we're saying here on our Travailing Men and Women prayer line. Don't be just satisfied with the theologian's interpretation of God's word. Know him for yourself. Know the God that I serve. Know that he'll do the same for you. Know the God that I serve. There are others who have been sent to help you. Our pastors, our prayer partners, our friends. They are finite. But God is the only one that is infinite. He's the only one who has the wisdom, infallibleness of God. No error in God. Amen, somebody. He's the holiest among the mighty. He's the mightiest among the holy. He's the only one. They may be sincere in what they tell you. They counsel you sometimes. They may give you good information and they may not. Yet there is a limit to their support as well. Until you trust God and unless you trust God, your living is in vain. You're going to do the same old redundant things, making the same old mistakes year after year after year. I told you the devil is a dumb devil, but yet he's smart. He's smart enough to put the same pressure on you this year that he put on you last year because it worked. He's smart enough to put the same scams and schemes right in your way because it worked on last year. But can we prove him wrong in 2018? Can we prove this devil wrong in 2018? Don't make him think he's got that much power over your life where you can't adhere to God's principles. God say, be holy because I'm holy. Holiness without which no man shall see God. So why we can't live that life? Why we can't live that life? Until you trust God, you won't know that he's a very present and help in the time of trouble. You won't know that he's a fountain of life unless you drink the water. You won't know it. You won't know it. You won't know that he's the God, the God of your salvation unless you get saved. You won't know that the Lord is good unless you taste and see. You won't know. Those are things that you're going to hear, but you'll never experience them for yourself until you try it. Unless you try, you won't know that his blood cleanses from all unrighteousness unless you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. You got to try it. You got to try it. Can I, can, I, can I please ask you to try it today? Can we try a new way, Prayer Line family? New family Facebook. Can we try a new way? Uh, so many benefits in the obedience. I promise you it is. I, I gave my testimony yesterday. There was no braggadocious nothing because uh, I was one that had lost everything. I was one that was living at the back of a car one while, and I did it by choice. Did it by choice because I didn't want to be a hardship on anybody. I got in my struggle. I got in my mess, so I get out by myself. I choose. I chose at that time to not be a burden to anybody. But boy, when I met up with holiness, when I met up with holiness, he's that very present help in the time of trouble. Call on Jesus this morning and ask him, God, show me how to live this thing for real. Aren't you tired of that betwixt and between situation? Remember, we told you in God, his word is yea and amen. There is no middle point. There is no middle point. The only middle thing that we have is Jesus. God head, Jesus middle, Holy Ghost next. Jesus hears the voice of God. He transmits the voice of God to the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit talks to you. Are we in alignment with God's word? Do we know how to follow him and be disciplined by the Holy Ghost? He's not a taskmaster. He wants to help you. He wants to teach you how to depend on him. Jesus didn't walk away from holiness. He had instructions from the Father. He said, go amongst them and redeem my people, redeem the lost. And a mere fleshly man, he did it as a fleshly man. So if he adhered uh, to the lifestyle of holiness, so can we. Jesus didn't sin. Then he bare all the responsibilities, the burdens of humanity. He didn't step away. He got up on the cross. The cross elevated him closer to God. If you get up on that cross today, it'll, it'll elevate you closer to God. The element of going toward heaven that God can change my situation. He can do this. 
I hear your spirits crying out today. I hear your spirits crying out today. And God wants to make a landmark in your life. Sister Emily, I hear the Lord saying that there's been some hardships in your life, daughter. There's been some confusion around you. But I see the Lord erasing that word confusion off of your forehead. I see the Lord coming in now and strengthening your strengthening your inner man. I, I'm looking at I'm looking in the spirit and I see something like a balloon. And it's in this balloon, it's like one of those uh, hot air balloons. And God's putting all your troubles in that hot air balloon. But guess what? There's not a pilot on this balloon. Those things are going to find themselves. They're going to walk away from you. They're going to push themselves in another element. You're never, ever going to be in those struggles again. You're never going to have those hardships again. For the Lord, release an anointing on your life for prosperity. I hear the Lord saying he releases anointing on your life, daughter, for prosperity. And we bless God for this word today. Uh, don't walk away from holiness. Don't walk away from it. God has a plan. He has a plan for each and every one of us. We have to learn how to follow God's plan. Jesus followed the plan. For a mere moment, he got a little shaky. He got a little quaky in the boots. For a mere moment, the Bible says that he uh, laid down the cross and he went and dealt with Jesus. Guess where? He dealt with him with his mind. He was right there on the hill called Golgotha. And Golgotha means a skull. So the devil began to play with Jesus' mind right before he got to Calvary. I've been sent for you this morning. And don't you hang this telephone up. He played with Jesus' mind as soon as Jesus was at the place to redeem humanity for a mere moment. For a mere moment. Golgotha, skull, playing with the mind, praying with his brain, trying to make him feel. Do you want to do this for real? Can you bear these burdens all alone? Is this something that you can do by yourself? Well, guess what? Let me give you revelation knowledge to African-American people, and I'm not making any uh, uh, discrepancies about um, uh, racials. Uh, the Bible says when Jesus was born, there were three wise men that saw the star, and they went and followed the star from the east. And there was a man by the name of Simon. Simon was an African-American man. Simon is the one that discovered the baby Jesus. He lifted Jesus up from the earth. Amen, somebody. Guess what? When Jesus went to the cross, there was another African-American man right there at the cross, and his name was Simeon. Simeon was the one that carried the burdens with Jesus. He lifted up the cross. The same way this first man lifted up the baby Jesus, this next man lifted up the cross. It's your time. African-Americans, you better hear me with your spirit. It's your time. All of us that have been in obscurity, been in bondage, been in slavery, you ushered Jesus in, you ushered Jesus out. And so now we're in that place now where favor is going to rest upon those that have been the least likely ones, the ones that everybody else felt as if you didn't amount to anything, you'll never be anything. But God said that you've been rejected by men, but you're chosen of God. It's the African-American communities. It's your time. You want a business? Step out on faith. You want entrepreneurship? Step out on faith. You want to own the BMW car lot? You want to own those uh, luxury boat liners and not just taking a cruise? You be the one to conduct it. Come on up in here. You, you can buy Royal Caribbean if you want to. Have our church this morning. This is how much favor God is going to be in our lives if we adhere to the godly counsel book. There's always a, a principal matter to the fact you've got to listen to God and obey him. Obedience without which, amen. The, the obedience, uh, the sacrifice is okay, but the obedience is better than the sacrifice. The obedience is better than the sacrifice we have to make. You have to be holy. You've got to live a lifestyle that's conducive to the power of God or else he can't go against his word. God cannot go against his word. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie, neither am I the son of man that I should repent, but I'm not going to tell a lie either. Amen. Holiness. Jesus stayed holy. He had to bear the burdens of, uh, of humanity and he didn't step away from it. He got up on that cross and the cross elevated him. What? It elevated him closer to God. We got to get closer to God. And if I be lifted up from the earth, first he was lifted up from the earth on that cross. Then secondly, he was raised from the dead. And now he draws all of us unto him, all mankind, if we allow him to do it. He said, I did it in order for you to do it. Can we do it this morning, prayer line family? Can we do it this morning? Father, we thank you right now for Sister Shirley. Sister Shirley, the Lord operates in your family this morning. I see in the spirit God is doing something within your family. Uh, there's been some little uh, indecisiveness. There's been a little division. I see some type of a little division that's been set in your family, but the Lord comes and corrects those things in your family today. Uh, the Lord said that this is going to be a great Christmas for you all. I don't know what type of gathering you all have. I don't know you, woman of God. I'm, I'm, I'm in the spiritual realm listening to God. Uh, in your gathering together uh, this Christmas season, uh, the Lord is going to show up. 
I see the presence and the power of God as a cloud over the place that you all are going to uh, come together as. And the Spirit of God is going to hit many in your family. There is a season of salvation that is coming to your family as well, says the Spirit of the living God. Sister Brenda in Tampa, daughter Sister Brenda in Tampa, uh, the Lord said that promotion does come from you. I hear the Lord saying that the enemy tried to cause you to be uh, in a place of hesitation. He tried to cause you to falter at the promises of God, but the Lord said, I am God and I change not. I hear the Lord saying that he only started with that first uh, 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 materialistic thing that he gave you, but what he's going to give you in the spirit is going to be far greater than anything that you could ever obtain from him in the natural. For I hear the Lord said that he has seasoned you and tempered you for this time, woman of God, that you can reach the masses of people. I see you doing great exploits in the kingdom of God. I see ladies coming around you. I see young ladies coming around you, and I see God causing you to teach them fashion. You're going to be able to teach these young girls fashion. You're going to take them back to a place where they can be ladylike and dainty and, and very uh, 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 beautiful women of God. Take them back to the place of beauty and feeling good about themselves. Feeling good about themselves, says the Spirit of the living God. Father, we thank you for Sister Juan in Chicago this morning, God. I pray that the hand of mercy continue to be upon her. I pray, Father, that you will continue to let her know that you're the God of her salvation, that you will not keep her in a place, Father, that she will be unprotected. Sister Wanda, I hear the Lord saying that you feel as if that you're unprotected. I hear the Lord saying this morning that you feel all alone and you feel abandoned. But God said to let you know he is the God of your salvation, for he has already worked out some details in your life and you have to know how to stay in that place because God is working behind the scenes. Good God Almighty, I hear the Lord saying I'm working behind the scenes and those things that are unseen at this very present time are the things that are going to keep you and cause you to remain in the race, says the Spirit of the living God. Father, we thank you this morning for this people. We thank you for the audience that we have this morning. We thank you for the word of God where people understand now, don't walk away from holiness. Don't walk away from holiness. God has a plan. He has a plan. He has a plan. Good morning, Sister Dolores. Good morning, daughter. Uh, Sister Dolores, the word of the Lord to you this morning is that there's a new ministry that God's implementing in your life. There's a new ministry, and sometimes it doesn't always come in a church forum. It's not always there where we actually activate something in our church, our organized structure. But I hear the Lord saying that he's going to cause you to walk out into the uh, charismatic world. There's a work that you need to do in the charismatic world uh, that God has orchestrated for you. And I see a business also. So, daughter, I tell her that, Holy Ghost. I see a business that God's going to give you uh, because you two have been faithful. So the Lord said he's going to cause you to have an idea that where it's not going to take much finances for you to open this business. It's not going to take much finances for you to open this business. But I do see other people around you. It's almost as if uh, like a transition house, a transitional house. I see you taking care of people. I see you nurturing people. And I even see some type of a, a structure around the mental health community. I see you uh, at, with a hand in the mental health community. Uh, there's a need in that area of the mental health community. And a lot of times the Holy Spirit will cause us to minister to them in order for them to know that they can live, for them to live. Father, I thank you for this assignment that you embrace your daughter upon. I thank you for the assignment, Father, that you trust your daughter to do in, to walk therein. It is your season. It is your time. It's your season. It's your time. I hear the Lord saying for those that have lost loved ones this year, for those of you that have lost loved ones this year, the Lord said, don't find yourself in an over grievous position for the enemy would have you to try to grieve with the heavy burden. The enemy would try to bring you to a place where you will continue to be burdened with that thing, but understand and recognize the love that's in your heart. They'll always have a place in your heart. They'll always have a place in your heart. So don't go to that place where you, when you take a deep breath, it seems as if it hurts. The Lord said he relieved you now from that grievous uh, opposition of grief. There's a burden of grief, a burden of grief. God said he doesn't want you to have a burden of grief, but he wants you to know that he's a very present help in the time of trouble also that the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. The Lord, the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. I hear the Lord saying that this morning that he's making himself an army. The Lord said he forms himself an army this morning that's going to go into the enemy's camp. Uh, when the children of Israel were released, watch this, when they were released from bondage, when God released them from Egypt, they didn't leave Egypt empty handed. The Lord told them to go get all the silver and go get all the gold and the jobs that they did. Nobody could fill those positions anymore. The Bible said, oh, Pharaoh was trying to find somebody that can make his candles for him and all the people had gone so he ran out of business. It's time for the saints of God to run Pharaoh out of business. Pharaoh is who? Pharaoh is your 
your job. Pharaoh is that thing that gives you a paycheck. Pharaoh is that thing that makes you be obligated the nine to five. It's time for the saints of God to take the place of Pharaoh, own your own businesses, have your own entrepreneurship, walk in the fullness thereof of God. For God says he supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory, which are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Sister Dorothy, the Lord speak to you this morning. The Lord speak to you this morning, Sister Dorothy. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm looking at a young man around you. I'm looking at a young man around you. And I'm looking at this young man needs to be ministered to. The Holy Ghost would have him to be ministered to because there's an assignment on his life. The enemy has attached an assignment to this young man and the enemy would have him to go down the wrong path. But I hear the Lord say that this prayer that I'm going to pray for this young man today is going to be a kingdom seed of righteousness, a kingdom seed of righteousness. Father, I release an anointing that destroys every yoke among this young man's life. I release the power of the cross and they may cobra die. The power of the cross will come to him right now, Father, any peer pressure that he had before, any undue hardship pressure that his friends try to make him do or influence him to do things that opposes the will of God, I speak now to the Spirit of God and I command the angels that you've given charge over this young man to come expeditiously to stand at his side. The angels of the Lord come to him right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you right now for this visitation upon this young man's life. In Jesus' name we pray. Saints of God, let's get ready. Let's get ready. For I have not seen and you have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has in store for those that love him. But you've got to walk in holiness. You've got to walk in holiness. We cannot compromise God right now. Try it. I promise you, if you try this thing from now on, uh, consecrate your lives, uh, lives living, lives worthy as unto the Lord. No inroads, no admixtures, not going back to the old way that we used to do it, not trying to find a resolve in the issues within ourselves, but go in the confounds of the Holy Spirit. Allow the Spirit of God to witness to us. Allow the Spirit of God to minister to us, and you're going to see the benefits of your obedience in God. You're going to see them. You're going to see that God is going to open the floodgates of heaven. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying he's going to open the floodgates of heaven on those that are obedient. He will open the floodgates of heaven on those that are obedient. This is the year of entrepreneurship. There are going to be people that's going to even try to offer you to buy their business. They're going to try to make offers to you to purchase their business. It's up to you to have the wherewithal, the intellect, amen, to learn how to orchestrate that thing and execute it and cause it to come to pass. It's up to you. God doesn't want the people of his that claim him, that name him. He doesn't want you burdened down. He doesn't want you shackled down. He doesn't want you not to be able to take vacations and live lucrative careers. He doesn't want that. It doesn't look good for you to say, I belong to God when you belong to Pharaoh. Come on up in here. Pharaoh is the taskmaster. Pharaoh is the one that lets you work 40 hours and give you a $500 paycheck. Child, please. What do you say? Girl, bye. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you should make $500 a day. Come on up in here. You should be able to make $500 and more per day. The Bible said that there's some secret treasures and hidden places that never, ever been exposed. You can know see I both shot. You know, more cobra shot. You got to go down in the spirit in order for God to be able to reveal these things to you. He wants to reveal them to you. He's waiting. I told y'all I had a vision from God and God had angels all around in heaven and the angels kept asking God, now God, can we do it now God, can we do it now God, he said I, you can't do it yet because I haven't found the people so many gifts, so many blessings, the angels are anxiously awaiting to release the blessings of the Lord, are you ready are you ready, apostle are you ready pastor are you ready, prophetess are you ready prophet are you ready, bishop are you ready are you ready body of Christ this is the season and this is the time for your breakthrough for your blessings, for the contributions that you've made to the kingdom of God. Your seed has broken up the fallow ground and it's now time for you to prosper in every aspect of your life. But there's a stipulation. God always has a stipulation. Don't walk away from holiness. He made a landmark. Don't change like everybody else does. Don't do what everybody else does. Don't jump on the bandwagon because it's working for them. You know what God told you. 
You know what he told you. The blood of Jesus cleanses. The blood of Jesus heals. We need to plead and apply the blood of Jesus. We need sanctification. We need holiness. We need to go back to that old landmark where we weep between the porch and the altar. It's okay to say, G, 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 Jesus. Come on. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. It's okay. I promise you that's where your power is. The Bible said on that day of Pentecost, it, sound, it came a sound. God's waiting to hear that sound. He cannot hear the sound from the body of Christ any longer. He sees the flashing lights. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. He sees the stage that everybody set. He sees the band that's performing. He sees the praise and worship team that look like the girls are dancing in the nightclub. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. So God is not pleased with those things. He said, yes, they can come like that. I'm sure you come just like that. He said, but if you introduce them to my power, if you introduce them to the Holy Ghost, then the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to redirect, re-instruct, keep them and hold them, keep you when you can't keep yourself. That's the God that I serve. I got it old fashioned, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just that old fashioned preacher. I'm sorry. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to revert to this world because holiness works. Holiness works. So we close with this today. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is God. Then he's a rewarder to those that do what? That diligently seek him. He's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. We got to seek him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all of these things shall be added unto us. Your entrepreneurship is in your obedience. Your financial breakthrough is in your obedience. For you to break that devil off of you and break those hardships off of your life and disconnect from those things. Well, how can two walk together unless they agree? Obviously, you're in agreement with it. You're in agreement with hardship. Obviously, you agree to be broke. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Obviously, you agree to have a bad relationship. You're in agreement with it. Because the Bible says it can't stay there if you don't agree with it. Post that on Facebook. Put it on Instagram, Snapchat. Amen. Let, let's, let's let this word go around the world. How can two walk together lest they agree? So if it stays there, it means that you're in agreement with it. And so I release you by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. Don't you hang this telephone up. We're getting ready to close. Father, I thank you for the obedience of the saints of God today. And I thank you, Father, for allowing me to encourage their spirit man, that the spirit man be lifted up the same way as Jesus Christ was lifted up from the cross. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Draw us nearer to you, God, where it's no longer I, but it's the Christ that liveth on the inside. Father, we thank you for the stability in the Lord Jesus Christ, where we're going to be unmovable, unstoppable, unshakable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain. We bless your people today, God. We release a blessing of the Lord that make it rich and addeth no sorrow. We command them to come off of Pharaoh's jobs. Come off of Pharaoh's job and let them be lucrative entrepreneurship. Let everything that their hands touch be, begin to prosper. And we thank you right now for this obedience on this Facebook family and our prophetic prayer line. Now, if you need further prayer at this time, if you want for us to touch and agree with you, call the prayer line, 712 432-0075, access code 533-510. We're on our prayer line as we leave you today, and we bless God for the prophetic word that was released. Uh, this this baby in uh, Jersey, Sister Cherise, this baby in Jersey, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, the baby in Jersey, uh, before we hang up, the Lord said that he, uh, there's a word from you as well. Uh, I see a superintendent that's been watching your works in the church. Uh, there's someone, uh, I don't know this name, you all call them. It's like a bishop's position and they've been watching your labor. They've been watching your works over the church. They've been discussing you for a promotion. Uh, there's going to be uh, something that's offered to you that's going to actually be amazing unto you. Uh, but I hear the Lord say, you've done the work of thousands. You've done the work of thousands. And the things that you've implemented, even with a children's ministry, with a children's ministry, uh, this thing is getting ready to take a turnaround for the better. It's going to increase. And I see more children coming to the ministry. I see more children coming to this ministry. And I see God giving you a lot of responsibility to take care of the little ones. The superintendent's watching you. They've been listening. They've been talking. They've been discussing uh, what you're doing in that particular setting that you have. And the Lord said that he places his hands upon you this day. Father, we thank you right now for that anointing. Father, you said that it is the presbyter that can lay hands on the saints of God and stir up the gifts that is lying dormant on the inside of them. So I stir up this gift now, the awareness that you have for this door. 
daughter. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that she, she finds favor from you, God, and favor from man. In Jesus' name we pray. Facebook family, we thank you yet once again. Make sure you share the page. Please, everyone, share the page. Can you please share the page? Amen. Praise God. If we've been a blessing to you, then why surely God wants to be a blessing uh, back to you as well. Be a blessing to us. However the Lord say in your heart, whatever God says, we bless God for you. If you need personal contact from me, my personal contact number is 855-292-7799. 855-292-7799. And we bless God for you. Get on that prayer line if you want any further prayer. We bless God for you this morning and you all have a God-blessed day. We will see you tomorrow morning on Travailing Men and Women, Changing a Nation back to God through prophetic prayer. We say every day, live fully and live freely. God bless you. We see you tomorrow morning on Wonderful Wednesday. God bless.